Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I am talking about the cold hard facts when it comes to cheating, the cold hard facts when it comes to cheating. And for some individuals, they are the victims. They have reached out to me, and so I will definitely be addressing the victims. And I am also going to talk about those who know about cheating, but yet they look the other way. And then I'm going to talk about the cheaters themselves. One of the things that popped up in my mind lately about this business of cheating is there are these women who say that the men are cheating on them and have left them with children. Children that they have to care for, children they have to do any number of things for alone. They would have surely liked the help, but the husband slash father is off taking care of of uh, some other things and some other people or a person. And so they are left to manage on their own. Now, I will tell you that from just personal experience, usually before kids even show up, there are signs. There are signs and you know what women as well as men do who have been cheated on? They will ignore the signs over and over again. Relationship experts, gurus, writers and so forth have warned, have warned people of the signs that a partner will cheat. And some of those signs, God, he opens our eyes to. Now, this is a spiritual channel, so I am going to go there when it comes to God. And for those who are not interested, hey, you can click off. You can do something else. But those who have a reverence for the one true God, those who consider themselves to be believers, please do continue to listen. Because I'm going to take you to that place where God himself accused a nation, Israel, of being faithless, of being like an adulterer, straying away from him. Okay. When we look at how God deals with those who claim that they want to walk with him, but yet stray away and go off and start Acknowledging all things satanic, ungodly, unwise, and so forth. We see that God has a way of calling his sheep back to the church, back to him, back to obedience, back to righteousness, back to living the kind of life that the individual originally went to God and said, look, I want a better life. And the Lord says, but you strayed away. I want to do some things differently. The Lord says, but when I gave you the opportunity to do what is right, you said, uh, well, uh, and make and just make excuses, right? Or go and do what they want to do. Well, this sort of thing takes place in relationships. Just like the individual has a shoddy, flaky, shaky kind of relationship with the one true God. The individual who cheated and sometimes the one who was cheated on has a similar relationship with a human being. It's shoddy, it's fake or it's flaky or it's based on uh, just a foundation that really is shallow. I really got involved with him because he had and then you fill in a blank. I spent some time with her because and you fill in a blank. You always go back to how you first got with this individual. And that says a lot as to why that person is stepping out on you now. That says a lot as to why, if you're the witness to all of this craziness, why that relationship just ain't working. And no matter how much you pray, it still ain't going to work. And then if you are that one that's cheating, then you can still go back to how you all got together to begin with. These flaky foundations, these shoddy foundations, how we go about meeting this one and that one is a good indicator as to whether or not we're going to remain faithful or they're going to remain faithful or <laughs> whatever might take, might take place as a result. 
Sometimes you see what people do is when they see that the writing is on a wall and it's negative, they want to make it positive by doing what? Getting married. Number two, having children. Number three, making big purchases together. Those are the three main things right there that people do. And then those are also the three things that the enemy will use to attack you too. Because number one, when you start messing around with marriage, oh, you talking about vows. You talking about standing before God. The enemy doesn't want that. So of course he's going to shake up the relationship. Of course he's going to start talking about how things are boring and routine and dull or whatever else. Right? Puts these little spirits in and around the person. I need to make some things a little better. I need to spice it, spice the relationship up a little bit. And that's when things start getting real complicated real quick because people who like to spice up relationships do all sorts of things in relationships that are ungodly. People who like to spice up relationships find themselves weeping because they realize that they made a grievous error. And then you have those individuals who are standing around and they kind of see what's taking place. Some of them are going to tell you straight up, listen, he's a cheater. <laughs> and I don't even know why you even bother with him. Let me tell you A, B, and C about him. Because sometimes they can see things that we can't see in people. And then what do we do? Oh, no, no, uh-uh, she's just a hater. She don't know what she's talking about. Oh, he never wanted me happy. Right. You dismiss it. You dismiss it. You dismiss it early on. You dismiss it during the process. And then for some people, they're still dismissing it. He said he don't love you. He showed you he don't love you. He rejected you a long time ago. And you still trying to hold on to that man. That man doesn't want you. OK. The woman, same thing. She already let you know what the real is. How come you are still trying to hold on to her? OK. She's going to go off with someone. It's just a matter of time if she hasn't already. And some of these people, they don't see it, right? Okay, so you may have been that one who didn't see, didn't see any signs, or at least you claim you didn't see any signs. So now the individual is up to no good. And you are saying to yourself, now what, Lord? And the Lord says that, well, just as a man has strayed away from me, you are experiencing what it is like when a man has strayed away from you. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I want you to get back into your word. I want you to start walking with me. I want you to get those children and start taking them over here to this particular church. Can you do that? But, 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 here come the excuses. Just as a man straight away from me, you have done also. You see, sometimes these cheating situations that take place are like mirrors. They reflect where you stand with God. I know some people don't want to hear that kind of message. Let me just say it like this. Sometimes we go through things because God wants us to draw near to him. And sometimes it takes knocking down our, our idols to get our attention. If you were idolizing that man. Or you were idolizing that woman. Then chances are. That God is allowing certain things to take place. Because he doesn't want you idolizing that man or that woman any longer. I can't believe that he did that to me. I can't believe that he's choosing that woman that he met on the internet over me. I can't believe that. Well believe it. Because at the end of the day, God, he wanted you to focus on him from the start. Let's just be honest. When you first start dating, you're not focused on God. You focus on what that man or that woman can do for you. You focus on the fact that I've never dated anyone quite like her or quite like him. You're fascinated. You're captivated. You want more of that person and you want more and you want more and then you get more. And then where's God in it until, oh, they cheat on you. They lie. They steal. You find out some ugly stuff. Now you want to get God in on the case. Come on. I'm telling somebody's little uh, journey toward God. That's how you got close with the Lord was that man or that woman put you through so much. Now you ready to take God seriously. 
Some people will say, well, I was taking God seriously before he showed up. Well, evidently it wasn't that serious because you allowed a man or a woman who was ungodly or you were unequally yoked with to distract you from that relationship. And God says you strayed. Now, we're not going to say that, oh, well, you're at fault. We're just going to say that sometimes God, he has to show us where we are in error. He has to show us where we are not where we should be by bringing things like cheating to our attention. You may not be the one that's cheating, but you know of some folks that have went through much and you say to yourself, why is it that God keeps showing me these people that got all these problems dealing with cheating and not being faithful and all that? Is there something I'm supposed to learn from this? That is the million dollar question for somebody. Is this something I should be doing in terms of uh, helping people out? Is this subject matter I should be talking about, writing about, uh, praying for? Praying that people would heal from cheating, be delivered from cheating. Some of you are right now. You're listening to this message and you're not directly impacted, but that is something that you should be praying about. I know for me, when cheating started rising up in the spirit again, that was because the Lord was showing me that I had an unfaithful partner. I'm just going to be honest with you. The Lord was showing me that the partner was straying away. That his interest was elsewhere and that because his interest was elsewhere, that he was giving me permission to free myself out of that binding relationship. And God, he shows me some things even now. I can't get into all the specifics, but he does show me some things even now as I am journeying this life with God. I am seeing where at times there are those uh, distractions that keep people from walking with the Lord. And then when those distractions keep people from walking with the Lord, those same distractions will also affect one's personal relationship, professional relationship, and any other type of relationship. Because the enemy doesn't want goodness for the believers. The enemy doesn't want you to live according to God's will. The enemy wants to keep you bound. He wants to use people, places and things that look good, appear to be good, but really are not so that you will go down that dark, troubled, messed up path. Some of you all were just delivered from this sort of thing. You were delivered from it in other ways. It didn't have anything to do with cheating or adultery. It was just you had a path that you was on that was headed toward destruction. And then when you made up in your mind, you wanted to do what was right. You got back on the right path. And that's what happened with me. I said, I don't want to be going down any dark paths. I want to be right there with God. But while you were doing that, that's when the enemy was messing around with some folk around you, you see. And that happens in so many different relationships, friendships, uh, professional work relationships, you name it. There is always that one that wants to do what's right. And then there's those others that want to do what's wrong. Okay. So the writing was on the wall early on that the relationship was not headed toward a good righteous uh <laughs> path it just wasn't okay all right so once you saw that things were starting to take that downward spiral that downward shift of course what does one do who's a, who's a believer you pray right okay so then you pray and you feel like the prayers are not really working OK, because I've been in that situation where I prayed and then I prayed some more. And before I knew it, eight years had gone by and things still hadn't changed. They got worse. And so I was left with no choice but to just say, Lord, I'm done. I can't do this. I don't want to do this. And the Lord, he released me. So you have that crossroads that you're going to reach sooner or later. And it's the crossroads where you say, OK, is my partner on board with me? If your partner is not on board with you in terms of keeping the relationship, then you have no choice but to let that person go. Otherwise, 
you're holding somebody who doesn't want to be held. You're trying to keep somebody who doesn't want to be kept. OK, and when you do that sort of thing, there's going to be a pushback. It's like the teenager who rebels against the parents. The parents are trying to keep that teenager at home. And the parent says and, and, and the uh, teen says, oh, no, uh-uh. I'm, I'm out. I'm done. It's over with. I'm old enough to be able to do some things on my own. And that's what I'm going to do. And so there's a bunch of arguing. There's some fighting and you're not ready and all this other stuff. Somebody's going to have to get to a place where they say, I want. I, I, I want to just do what's right. And if that person doesn't want to, then you, you find yourself having to take your hands off of them and saying, OK, well, you're on your own then. And I put you in Jesus in Jesus's hands because I can't do it anymore with you. I can't argue with you. I can't fight with you no more. I'm not going to keep trying to hold on to you. OK, if some of you all are willing to do that, you're going to see that freedom. You're going to start to see the peace and you're going to get up out of this uh, just binding relationship. But for others, what's going to happen is as long as you're holding on, as long as you're trying to do anything and everything um, to make something work and that person's unwilling, it's going to be nothing more than more fights. OK, you want a prediction of what the future looks like. It's going to be more drama. It's going to be more hell to pay. And God, he'll be with you. He'll be with you through the storms, but he'll also be the one cautioning you. He'll be the one telling you, here's an exit plan. Here's an opportunity to get out. Here are some resources. Here's what you need to do and all of that. And if you're ignoring it and you want to just keep on doing things um, in the way that you want, well, it, it's going to be drama, right? The cold, hard facts about cheating is that you're going to find yourself depressed at times. And that depression may last for a while or it may not last for long because rejection hurts, right? It's not going to uh, make you feel good. And when you feel that those negative feelings are starting to creep up, that's all the more reason why you need to have a support system around you during a tough time. That means people who are willing to listen. Um, you may have to even go and make a doctor's appointment and talk with your doctor about some of these new things that are going on with your mind, your body. Um, then, of course, go to the church and talk with uh, someone about the spiritual issues that you might be faced with as a result of this emotionally and or physically um just abusive person because there is abuse in some of these uh, relationships where there's cheating. Okay. And sometimes people overlook that they're so busy focused on the cheating, but they're not focused on the fact that he's also emotionally abusing, abusing you, or she's also physically hurting you. I mean, that's not good either. So you got a lot of other stuff that's going on too. in these relationships, the, uh, other cold hard fact is that a lot of times these people who go off and cheat, they claim that they love people, but it's not love. It's lust. OK, and they confuse it. And so when they confuse their feelings, um, they will say that they love you, but you know better. So you say things like love doesn't do this. Love doesn't do that. You are wrong for what you're doing, blah, 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 blah. And the person wants you to go along with the reasons as to why they cheated in the first place. Don't don't do that. Don't go along with their reasons. Um, just look at the fact that this person has betrayed you. Are you going to be able to trust them again? It's going to take some time if you plan on staying with that person. But I have learned over the years that once you say, oh, OK, I get it. I understand uh, you were doing this this because and then let's just continue on. Let's just give it another try. That's when a person turns right around and, and does it again. Once the relationship is stagnant or routine or dull or just on cruise control. OK, here we go again. He's back to looking at this woman. He's back to befriending this one. Um, he's back to being on the Internet, looking at different women's profiles on the social networking sites, on the dating sites or wherever he sees a pretty face at work, you know, and these sorts of things keep showing up with people who have a, a personality that they just can't seem to control. They want to sometimes, but other times they don't because they want to feel a certain way, whatever that 
uh, addiction they might have makes them feel they want to just keep going with it because unfortunately some of these cheaters they do have their share of addictions some of it is rooted in porn other addictions are uh, rooted with alcohol and drugs and then some just have their share of addictions um, because of whatever whatever makes them uh, whatever fulfills a void okay um, it may go all the way back to childhood. You can't, Lord Jesus, you can't fight all those battles with some of these folks. It, you you find out that, okay, he cheated. Then you find out there's some other information that you didn't want to find out. Then you find out that it goes goes back to when he was whatever, whatever. And there's some history going on with them and it hurts because you're saying this is just too much i can't deal with all these things right so this is why you have to go to the lord with all of these things and let them go i know it's going to be difficult but you're going to have to make some time for yourself to get what you need to do under control Let's say that right now your life is out of control because of all of what you found out about a partner. You've got to do you get you to where you need to be so that you don't continue to spiral out of control or do something crazy. Because some of these women who can't take rejection and some of these men who can't take the fact that they found out some dirt um, will end up being abusive themselves. So the one who was doing something that was emotionally abusive uh, and they were the control freak or they were whatever you want to label them as. Now the victim becomes the abuser as a result of what you did. This is what you're going to have to deal with. And then they start listing all of these um, all of these rules and prerequisites and whatever else they can come up with consequences uh and then they become very controlling very abusive and it is what it is some more issues dealing with cheating are the lies <laughs> if he lies about one thing or she lies about another thing you're not going to trust them you're not it's going to be always something you said you were over at so-and-so's house. You said that you paid only X amount of dollars for this. But then I found out that you bought something else. You said that those items that you bought through direct mail was for. And then you find out that those items were really for somebody else. So all of this stuff that these people keep coming up with to hide their uh, shady behaviors all it does is it keeps you on edge because now you feel like you got to look through stuff. You got to get you got to get somebody to follow someone, which I did. I, I'll be honest with you. Years ago, I paid somebody to follow an individual who insisted that he wasn't doing A, B and C. But I found out otherwise. You see, uh, I also found uh, information out about an individual who he thought I found it one way and I found it in a totally different way. But I let him think whatever he was going to think. Um, there's been times where I have sat in front of a former partner and he swore up and down that he didn't go here. He didn't do this. He didn't say this. He, he was always coming up with some story and he could do it in such a sweet and nice way. And then found out that he had such a dark side. It was, it was scary. So there are so many fronts that people who cheat have and they know how to act one way with mama <laughs> another way with daddy they know how to act a different way with a friend and then a different way with you as their uh, partner so they have many faces and another thing i found out about um individuals in general who like to cheat is that for them uh it's a rush it's a rush to be with someone new it's it makes them feel alive especially if they're older and they cheat they feel like they are reliving their youth all over again. And if you uh, get too old, then uh, they feel like, well, you're no good to me any longer. I need a new piece of meat. I need something fresh. I need something young. And that hurts, especially a lot of the middle aged women who are cheated on and are left with children and all of that. They feel like they are not worthy they have um 
they feel like, well, what could they have done to make things better and all that. Let me tell you, there's nothing that you can do to make things better. A cheater, once he or she has made up in his or her mind to cheat, it's going to be what it's going to be. I learned that from players. I learned that from pimps and hustlers. Okay. Once they've made up in their mind that this is what I want, it doesn't matter how good you cook meals. It doesn't matter how good you look. It doesn't matter how many babies you had for them. If anything, to be quite honest, the more babies you have for them, the more you drive them away a lot of times. It's not always about, oh, well, this one, he's going to draw near to me now that we have babies. He's going to start focusing more on me. I found that a lot of times uh that just complicated matters and for some of the men in my own family who decided that they did not want to be fathers uh when they found out that oh we're having another baby that was just a turn off and they really wanted to stay away then that means more money that means more crying that means more drama uh uh nope so they weren't they were definitely not turned on when the uh girlfriend turned mother of their children um decided that uh that uh, she wanted to make things work and well mm -mm. a lot of that a lot of that happened and the men just went off and did their own thing and then when they started enforcing government started enforcing child support now the men were really angry <laughs> So there was no hope of uh, keeping that man, winning that man and all that. It just wasn't going to work. OK, so I had plenty of unfortunately, I got plenty of cousins who did not uh, grow up with fathers because fathers were too busy rolling around and here, there and everywhere. The other cold hard fact about this uh, cheating is that just because uh, somebody says that they're not going to cheat doesn't mean that they're going to stand by their word. OK, he may be good for five years. He may be good for five months. But then here comes something to distract him. I did find, though, that some of the individuals who did eventually become faithful, it took them becoming quite ill. So they couldn't really do what they used to do. So that's why they stuck it out and went on and settled down. Um then I found that some, they just couldn't attract who they wanted to attract. And so they pretty much gave up. And so they went back to being faithful. Okay. Uh, it gets harder and harder the older you get to pull the kind of people that you really want. You may pull some people, but it ain't necessarily who you want. Okay. And I learned that from being on the other side. Because remember, I've been cheated on, but I also, in my youth cheated and as you get older it's not as uh easy to attract the type of people that you want so for some folks it boils down to well do i want to keep on messing around or do i want to just settle down then you have this uh issue that occurs with some of these cheaters where there's the guilt that takes place and they really want to make things work and they're really doing what's right. But meanwhile, the partner, uh, they're not really all that convinced and they're feeling a little bit of payback type of emotions. Like I need to pay him back. I need to pay her back for cheating on me. So they want to experience that world a little bit. So the one who was cheating ends up being cheated on. And now the relationship is really complicated and things uh, sometimes just don't work out. OK, I'm not going to say that they always end because that's not true. I know some people who right now are in relationships where there was repeated cheating going on and they're still hanging in there. But uh, not without a lot of drama, a lot of accusations, a lot of where you at, what you doing and no, you ain't allowed to go nowhere without me. <laughs> OK, and for some of you all, you know what that is, because you've even stated it to a partner. You are not to go anywhere without me. Where where, where did you say you were going right down the street to go where? OK, I'm coming. It's just right down the street. It don't matter. I'm coming. <laughs> so um, here's the other thing, too, is that there are those people who say, well, if you're going to cheat, you might as well cheat up. And that's what some people do. They actually do find somebody that's better than the person that they're with. 
somebody who has less baggage and somebody who they can see themselves with for the rest of their life and will go so far as to marry that individual. And I have uh, heard of those stories as well. And I met someone who did just that. So the opportunity came and the man snatched it up and ended up having um, a better partner as a result. That is one of those things that those who are victims don't want to see or hear about. He's doing better. (laughs) He gave me hell, but he's doing better. Uh, uh, uh. But it happens. I can't explain all of why things go the way they go. But I tell you that if God is in the plan from the start of a relationship, then you don't have to worry about that sort of thing, you see, because you are it. You are the best. You are the one that's going to give that man or that woman everything and then some um, because you two were placed together uh, divinely. That's different. But when you're not placed with someone divinely, whether they cheat up or cheat down, the point is, is that you got got yourself involved with probably somebody unsaved, okay? And most likely you were possibly unsaved or didn't really have all that great relationship with the Lord. And this is why you have so, so much drama now. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So if we all have sinned in some capacity and fallen short of the glory of God, that also means that we've fallen short of his blessings too. And so what we may have called a blessing when we met someone wasn't necessarily so. Okay. Romans 5, 12, wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. Once again, all have sinned. I know that some people want to look, be looked at as just the victim, innocent, never did anything wrong, but. That is not the case. A lot of times there is something said, something done that was wrong. Now, that doesn't mean, though, that it gives a person a right to cheat on someone. But let us not be so ignorant uh, to say things like I never did anything wrong, because if we were to sit down and talk with the cheater, the cheater would start listing a whole bunch of things uh, before he or she decided to step out that was wrong with the relationship okay i think that part of the healing that comes with uh, situations like this is recognizing where one has done some things that were wrong and realizing that maybe there is no hope for the relationship but there is hope in christ there is the peace that surpasses all understanding if we are trusting in him and not following after men and women, not idolizing men and women, not assuming that men and women are not flawed, including oneself. There is healing, but there has to be a humbling process. And I think sometimes it takes cheating for some people to wake up because I can very well walk around here and talk about how great and wonderful my man is and how faithful he is and all of that. And then something happens where it just shatters everything okay that's why we don't put all our stock and we don't brag and talk about how wonderful somebody is uh we just don't do that sort of thing because the enemy has a way of coming in and infiltrating things okay sometimes uh, the person knows exactly what he or she is doing and sometimes they're led away or seduced And there are people in this world who they know how to do that sort of thing. A partner may not have even considered on cheating, but then if there is an enemy in the camp, may use someone to seduce that partner. And then before long, uh, one is caught up in something. Okay. So we do pray and we do ask that the Lord keep divorce away. But if one has been cheated on, That is your uh, key to getting out of that marriage, because uh, anytime one is uh, committing adultery, uh, he or she has basically violated scripture. So you can get a divorce. Mark 10, 2 and 12 says, and he saith unto them, whosoever shall put away his wife and marry another committeth adultery against her. And if a woman shall put away her husband and be married to another, she committeth adultery. So that's how strict uh, it was back then, and it still is to this day um, in many faiths. 
Luke sixteen eighteen says, Whosoever putteth away his wife and marrieth another committeth adultery. It says pretty much the same thing. And then, and oh, and that's another thing too, is that if this sort of thing happened where one has married and then remarried and remarried some more, well, and, and this cheating is taking place again and again, it's safe to say marriage is not a good look on you. It just isn't because you don't need to keep putting yourself through this type of stress. It's just not worth it. That's why some people throw their hands up and they say, I'm not getting married again. This is too much. Okay. But when you say you're not getting married again, that doesn't give you a license to go out here and start uh, having sex with all sorts of people either. That's where people are in error. So you have to be careful of that sort of thing, because if you claim to be a believer, you're lo you're losing people. When you go out and you're dating and you're having sex with different people and and you're divorced and you're just doing whatever you want to do, you're losing people. You're not winning them to Christ. And unto the married, I command yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. But and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband and let not the husband put away his wife. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord, if any brother hath a wife. That believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. And the woman which hath a husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. So this is why you get some people who, even though they cheated, even though they did some dirt, but they're trying to do what's right now, um, they're willing to stay. Then these couples decide, okay, well, you know what, we're just going to work it out. Because he's willing to work it out because she's willing to work it out because there are things that they're still doing that show that they're very much a couple and they want things to work. OK, for the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy? OK, so some people, they will continue on in a relationship even with an unbeliever um, due to that sanctity that is involved there, as the scripture uh, mentions. OK, now. Uh, there is one other scripture that I'm looking for before I close out this message. And that's one. Oh, is Matthew 5, 31, 32. It hath been said, whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery and whosoever shall marry her that is divorced committeth adultery okay so you can put away once again someone who has uh, cheated on you so you see there are those things that arise when it comes to cheating and when they do arise, you want to make sure that you are grounded in your word. You are praying. You are fasting. You are getting some like-minded individuals to cover you in the name of Jesus and counsel you during this tough time. Uh, for those of you all who are witnessing cheating going on, you can confront the individual privately about the matter. Uh, if you do need to have a witness present, then by all means, you do. Um, preferably somebody who's not a gossip or a liar or an exaggerator and uh, talk about the issue that's taking place as well as the consequences. Uh, if you are that one who is cheating, uh, I'm just going to be just like Jesus was uh, with the woman at the well. Sin no more. It's real simple. You don't need a long speech about that sort of thing. Just sin no more. Because if I claim that I'm a believer and I'm walking with the Lord and I trust the Lord and I believe in God, then I'm not going to continue in a relationship, whether it's emotional and or physical. I'm not going to continue in that while I'm with someone else. And then it should be a turnoff just to know that all of the body fluids that's being passed between you as well as a partner, uh, there is the increased chance of an STD. There's also a pregnancy that can result uh, either or or with both and then the other thing is that um, especially with the middle age population HIV is on the rise again so just wanted to put that out there because a lot of times people who are cheating with someone that person is involved with someone else because they feel like they have every right I know back when I was uh, 
that one that was cheating feeling like, well, I got every right to go and do what I want to do because, hey, he's already cheating with me. So I know he doesn't expect me to be faithful because <laughs> that's not going to happen. And so I had that type of attitude about it. And um, back then, uh, safe sex was pushed a lot. There was a lot of, of a lot of um, advertisements and so forth. Music was pushing safe sex. I don't see that happening nowadays. And it's uh, unfortunate because if people are going to step out on each other, uh, they might as well protect themselves. I'm not encouraging that. I'm just saying they might as well protect themselves. But you need to stop. You just need to simply stop because God, he is not pleased and he wants his people to be saved. He wants his people to draw near to him. He doesn't want them drawn near to men and women. OK, so make the time with the Lord. Confess and repent. It's real simple. And hopefully your secret won't get out if you are that one that's cheating. But if it does get out, you just tell the truth. Yes, this is what I did, but I'm no longer doing it. And if you want to work this relationship out, I'm willing to work with you. Ephesians 4, 31, 32 says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. So will there be bitterness? Will there be arguing and so forth if the truth comes out? Absolutely. But you need to be tender hearted. You need to be forgiving of one another. OK, because why? God, he forgave you, didn't he? Genesis 2.18 says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. And that's usually what happens is that after cheating and then the person, they get tired of you, the newness wears off, you end up being alone. Okay? And then you got to start from scratch all over again. But it's not good for a man to be alone, right? So if it's not good for a man to be alone, then why do things that's going to put you on that path to be alone? There's a lot of senior citizens in high rises all across our land who are alone. And if we sat down and talked with some of them, they'll say, well, part of the reason why my kids don't come around, my, my ex-wife or my current wife or my ex-husband or current, is because of some dirt I did. I mean, for some of them, that's the reality. In their youth, they were doing a lot of bad things. And now they are all alone. And that could very well happen to some of you all. You'll be old and alone because of all of your foolishness. We are not going to be young forever, saints, as well as sinners. We are not. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. So if you are so blessed to have a help meet, you need to look at the positives and stop looking at the negatives in your partner. Genesis 2.24 says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Now, if the Bible says this, right? And you believe it, right? Okay. So then why is it then that we got those that if mom and dad's not around, they're cleaving to sisters and brothers? I had to say that. They're cleaving to sisters and brothers. Sisters and brothers are getting more conversation, more time, more energy about everything. And meanwhile, the partner is at home and they're not getting too much of anything. But yet, folks want to wonder why folks step out. Okay. I'm just saying, we got a lot of folks that are distracted by everyone and everything. And I've said this in other audio, instead of focusing on their marriages and on the one true God. Husbands are to love their wives. In, in Ephesians 5, 21 uh, through 33. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. You see, the Bible is talking about wife, not mistress, not prostitute, not uh, potential. He, the Bible specifically talks about the wife. So the wife, she has significance, a lot of significance. And one thing about a God hears a wife, a wife's prayers as well as a husband's prayers. He hears them. And when you do things that keep some drama up, one thing about it, you put yourself in the direct line of fire of the one true God himself. A believing wife's prayers go a long way. A believing husband's prayers go a long way. I'm a witness. OK, you don't want to mess around. Really, you do not want to mess around um, on a husband or a wife, especially one who uh, gave vows before God and man. That's why a lot of these men end up, especially cheating men and women, end up having nothing in the end. Uh, they end up losing out on much. If it's not the material wealth, it's their health. If it's not their health, they, they end up losing out on their kids because the kids find out that daddy was cheating, mama was cheating or whoever. Right. And so when they find these sorts of things out, uh, there's a lot of losses that take place. So is it really worth 
keeping this person who has no title, who's not recognized by the one true God around, and you claim to be a believer, and then on top of that, having a believing husband or wife who's praying, and most likely, and most likely some vicious prayers too. Because <laughs> I know that um, when I was going through a lot with a former partner, um, I did pray some serious prayers, and God did answer them. So I'm just saying, you just don't want to be on the wrong side with God messing around with these uh, folks who don't hold no type of title, aren't interested in too much of anything but getting their fleshly needs met. So I leave you with Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. So there you have it. Be encouraged knowing that God is going to fight your battle if you are, in fact, a victim. But you also have to look at this as a humbling experience and just never again idolize a man or a woman. God doesn't want that. He wants you to remain faithful to him. And if you are that one that's witnessing some downright ugly stuff going down with uh, somebody cheating, uh, do confront, but at the same time, you might want to distance yourself from someone like that because you don't want to be caught up in nobody's drama in their crossfire. Uh, and if you are that uh, one who is cheating, stop. Real simple. Just stop. Count up the costs. Count up how much you're going to lose as a result. Well, that is it. Blessings to you. Please do check the description box for anything that might be of interest. You've been listening to YouTube in Enterprise 7. To God be the glory. Also, we do welcome donations and thank you.